Welcome to Curate the Bowl for the Itchy Dog. I'm Dr. Chris Besant. I've been a veterinarian for over 30 years and have treated tens of thousands of veterinary patients. What I'd like to bring to you today is some very proactive tips that you can do to develop this healthy foundation so that you can help your dog long before the itching gets out of control. So when I look at proactive things that we can do for our pets. Number one is food. So food is the foundation of health and food has the largest impact on the allergic dog. And then supplements and supplements to me are targeted nutrition. So adding an omega-3 fatty acid to their diet that will um, decrease inflammation of the skin, or adding an omega-6 fatty acid like GLA that is going to build this beautiful foundation of skin. And then if you need pharmaceuticals for your dog that is really crazy itchy and their quality of life isn't good, absolutely. But hopefully, and I can say that from my years of clinical experience, pet parents that did the other things right, so had great nutrition and had the right supplements. When they did need pharmaceuticals, they needed a lot less of them for a shorter per period of time and had less toxic side effects. So it's really about the quality of life of that pet. So if, you go, if you're going to a traditional veterinarian, so your dog is itching like crazy and you think it could be a skin allergy, and you go into your traditional veterinarian, you're gonna most likely come out with pharmaceuticals. So it might be an injection of a corticosteroid, it might be uh, corticosteroid pills like prednisone that you would head home with, antihistamines, you might get um, some of the newer pharmaceutical injections. And thank God those are there when you need them. But they, tend to be short-lived and the more you use corticosteroids for example the more you have to use them so you start to use more steroids in shorter duration and you start to see some of the toxic side effects which would be over drinking and overeating and restlessness and hot and irritable and soon the cure becomes worse than the disease itself so what I'd like to share with you today is some of the things that you can do to develop a great foundation of health. So when you do need pharmaceuticals, thank God that we have them. As a veterinarian, I'm trained in both Western medicine. So what we would think of in the US as traditional um, veterinary medicine, but I'm also trained in traditional Chinese medicine. So I'm gonna look at it from both perspectives. and. I can't talk about it without describing chi. And chi is the life force within your body. Uh, chi is the life force within your dog's body. And complete health from a Chinese medical perspective is this gentle simmering pot of water, which makes a lot of sense that we need to have um, heat to our body to have metabolism and digestion. We also have to have fluids to the body to cool the body and to sleep well at night and have a calmness to our spirit. So ultimately for the allergic dog, that's what we're trying to get back to is this gentle simmering pot of water. So when I talk about um, the itchy dog, the question is, is how itchy are there? Are they? So. For dogs that just have dry skin, they're itchy, but they're not like crazy over the top itchy. They itch a little bit, their, um, their skin is kind of cool to the touch. And then there's those allergy dogs and allergy dogs are super crazy itchy. Like they're itching all night and they're itching to the point that they're, um, they're breaking the skin surface and they're damaging their skin. And so approaching each one of those itchy dogs is a little bit different and we'll go into that. So let's talk about allergies and allergies are, we think of it as the allergen as the problem, but in reality, it's the way the dog responds to that allergen 
that is the problem. So um, when a dog inhales ragweed, for example, ragweed pollens, the body should normally sound the red alarms and have an immune response to it, but then it should calm down. And that would be a normal response. A hypersensitivity response is that dog that just goes over the top. Like they breathe in the pollen, they throw on the red alarms and the red alarms just keep going and going and going and they release histamine and the skin becomes hot and itchy and inflamed and, and they itch and they itch and they itch. And that is this hypersensitivity reaction of the immune system to the allergen. And it doesn't matter what the allergen is, it's that hypersensitivity reaction. So when we look at um, Chinese medicine, we're gonna look at two different theories in Chinese medicine. And one is called the eight principles, which is really simple. And the other is called the Zhang Fu organ meridian theory that we'll talk about. So the eight principles is that Tai Chi symbol that most people uh, understand or are used to. And that is, that there's yan and yin and yan is outward aggressive active movement heat inflammation and yin is quiet maternal inward moisture nighttime winter and you need to have a balance of both so remember these this gentle simmering pot of water you need to have yan you need to get up in the morning and go about your day and you also need to have yin and yin is the ability to sleep well at night to have fluid and moisture to the body so it has to be this gentle balance between the two the eight principles is also hot and cold which kind of goes um, hand in hand with yin and yang and so of course the allergic dog is way too yang has too much heat they're way too hot in general so any pet parent with an allergic dog will always comment how hot they are to the touch. Um, and then there's the principles of excess and deficiency. And excess is that dog that's just like going after the ball and just craze, craze, craze. They just can't stop. That's excess, way, way, way too much. And then deficiency would be that kind of older dog who lays in front of the fireplace, doesn't move a heck of a lot. They're, they don't have enough chi. And then there's the eight principles of exterior and interior. And that's really more the concept of invasion into the body. So as allergies occur and you start to get this extreme heat, that extreme heat starts to invade internally into organs like the liver that we'll talk about. So a hypersensitivity allergic reaction in a dog is reflected as too much yawn, too much heat, very excess, um, and tending to invade into the interior. So what does that dog with, um, that just has dry skin look like? That dog is kind of cool to the touch. They're not, um, they don't have a greasy, gooey kind of dog smell to their coat but they're itchy. Now those dogs have a different approach. They're, it's not going internal. They're not having a, a great hypersensitivity reaction. Their skin is just too dry. And the best way to rehydrate the skin is to use omega-3 fatty acids. So um, things like EPA and DHA, as well as omega-6 fatty acids, GLA. And adding those fatty acids tend to develop a really wonderful hydration or yin to the skin and to the coat. So pretty simple. So if it's just a dog that has dry, itchy skin, adding omega-3 fatty acids or adding a GLA like from uh, evening primrose or bor borage oil or even hemp oil are great choices to rehydrate the skin. But let's talk about that dog who's super, super itchy. Like itching all day, itching all night, itching to the point that they are excoriating or damaging the skin surface. So those dogs are hot to the touch. So when you touch them, you'll feel the heat radiating from their skin. They're, it oftentimes is seen in like the armpits or the groin. 
and the skin is hot and red to the touch. The skin can also be really greasy and kind of phlegmy and have that um, stinky dog coat, and we'll describe that more in depth. And But they're the super, super itchy dogs. That's that hypersensitivity reaction. So we're going to use omega-3 fatty acids and GLAs, but we're going to add more than that. The other Chinese theory that's used in or looked at from a allergic perspective is the Zhang Fu organ meridian theory. And that is that the dog's liver plays a role in allergies. And the liver from a Western perspective detoxifies. The liver from a Chinese perspective provides this smooth flow of qi throughout the body and it's like a pump. And anytime that pump is blocked, the pump keeps on going and you get this heat and inflammation to the body. So from a Chinese perspective, anything that could obstruct that pump could be things that we would think of like as toxins. So uh, chemicals and pesticides and herbicides and um, excessive vaccinations. All of that can affect the liver as well as the detoxifying abilities of the liver. The other thing that I really loved about Chinese medicine is Chinese medicine looks at emotions as not just a random thing, but that emotions are a symptom. So for the allergy dog, their emotion is restlessness and anxiety, um, but oftentimes the emotion of frustration can affect the liver and affect the skin as well. So a dog, for example, a border collie that's kept in an urban setting and isn't getting a lot of exercise, that dog has a lot of frustration. And that frustration can ex be exhibited in the body as heat and inflammation someplace. So that's like a whole nother webinar that we could discuss. So heat that's produced from the liver can um, affect all the um, organs of the body, but particularly can affect the skin as well. So remember when I was talking about that gentle simmering pot of water and that's complete health, that's balance. Well, the allergic dog is like a boiling pot of water. So the allergen the that the body has this hypersensitivity to is like the flame to this pot. And so that pollen or grass or mold or dust is turning up the heat to the pot. And then of course that pot starts boiling, which that's the heat that we feel exteriorly. And then the yin or the fluid of the pot starts to steam away. And as that yin steams away, what do we have at the base of that pot is now like a really thickened soup. And that thickened soup is is considered phlegm, and that's that greasy, stinky um, phlegminess that you'll feel on an allergy dog's coat or the weeping that you'll see in a hot spot. So how do we help this? And the best way to help it is to use the opposite. So if this is a pot boiling out of control, we want to use herbs that are really cooling. So we're going to use cooling foods and cooling herbs to bring down that heat and inflammation. We're going to essentially scoop the goop out of the pot and throw it away. That's called um, draining damp heat from an herbal perspective. So we're going to use things like plantago. Um, we're going to tonify the yin, which is would be equivalent to adding fluid back, back into the pot. So that's a way to cool it down. And then the herbs that I'm talking about, we would also add Zizifus and Long Yan Ru, which are fabulous herbs that um, calm the spirit and decrease that restlessness and break that itch excoriation cycle. So what I loved about looking at veterinary medicine, both from the Western perspective as well as from the Chinese perspective is even though we're using very different words and it's, um, it's a very different philosophy, we're essentially saying the same thing. So for example, when we're looking at cooling herbs like 
um, Scutellaria or Gentian and Gardenia, Buporum, they're all anti-inflammatory in their properties. So from a Western perspective, we call them um, anti-inflammatory. From a Chinese perspective, we would call them very cooling. So number one that I would recommend for the allergic dog is very cooling herbs, herbs that um, decrease that heat and inflammation. The other herb that I really love to use for allergic dogs is milk thistle. And as we talked about the liver that provides this smooth flow of chi, that pump that overheats, that organ that detoxifies chemicals and pesticides, we want to support that organ. And the best way to do it is with milk thistle. And milk thistle has kind of a walnutty, nutty taste. So dogs eat it great. And it helps to protect the liver during times of stress and helps to detoxify the body. So almost all allergic pets, I'm going to recommend adding milk thistle as well. So then let's talk more about curating the bowl. So as, we, as I said before, we're going to curate the bowl with supplements, so herbs that are very cooling and um, hepatoprotectants like milk thistle. But then I would also recommend adding um, cooling foods. And this is a traditional Chinese medicine concept that food has energetics, that you and I would choose to eat fruits and vegetables in the summertime because it's hot out. And we would choose to eat stews and soups in the winter time when it's cold out. And that what you eat affects your body and affects them internally. And that's the same thing that holds true for our pets as well. And that food is the foundation of health. So absolutely, number one is it needs to be species appropriate. So lower carbohydrates, higher meat content, certainly organs, um, smaller amounts of fruits and vegetables. But the whole idea behind food energetics is pretty simple. So if a dog is too hot, you give them cooling foods. If a dog is too cold, you give them warming foods. So in, in the allergic dog, the best way to curate their bowl is to be adding cooling foods to their bowl. Kind of in that analogy of the summertime, we would tend to eat fruits and vegetables. Many of the cooling foods are fruits and vegetables. And because dogs are carnivores, that kind of limits the amount of cooling foods that we can use. So unfortunately, the cooling meats tend are pretty limited. They're um, fish, rabbit, and duck. And those are going to be your best choices for proteins that I would recommend for the allergic dog. And then adding in things like celery and spinach and Broccoli are great choices and certainly um, yogurts. So that's going to add in some probiotics as well. And cottage cheese all tend to be really cooling. The other thing that you might consider is that depending on the season, you might also use some neutral foods. So in the dead of winter, when it's really cold out, most people most allergy dogs aren't very allergic at that time of the year because the tide is in their favor. So you might choose to use neutral foods and add neutral foods into the cooling foods as well. So some of the neutral proteins would be um, pork and beef would be great choices. But then you really want to stay away from warming foods because adding a warming food to their diet is like adding kerosene to the fire. So the most warming food is lamb and venison, uh, but turkey and chicken is also considered warming. So I would tend to avoid those with the allergic dog. And most people will describe that their dog with allergies have uh, allergies to chicken, which makes a lot of sense from a number of perspectives. So if you're, if you're feeding a kibble diet, you know that the ingredient deck is the highest quantity is listed first and then it goes in decreasing quantities. So you could look at the top five ingredients of that package and identify that maybe you have a cooling, 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 and a neutral meat. So that generally is considered more of a cooling kibble. Kibble in itself, because it's dry, 
and it, it tends to be um, more hot. So going with a whole food or a fresh food diet um, is, a, is a much better choice. Um, but that also provides you with a lot of the antioxidants that you need as well. Um, Simple Food Project is a, a great resource. They make um, freeze-dried foods that are based on um, cooling, neutral, and warming. Um, so that is a great choice. And so the for dogs, it would be a, a duck and trout formula. For kitties, it would be a white fish and duck. But remember, it's also what you put in for their treats as well. So you want to go with treats like duck and whitefish that are very cooling as well. So you definitely want to be proactive about your pet's care. And the sooner you start thinking about adding in cooling foods and cooling herbs and um, hepato or liver protection, the better. So in preparation for the allergy season, you definitely want to add cooling herbs to them. You want to add milk thistle. And then absolutely, you should be increasing the omega-3 fatty acids and GLA. So um, I recommend krill as a, a lower in the uh, fish species. So it tends to have less toxins. So krill or algae or even anchovy, so lower on the, um, the food group. And then add cooling foods as your foundation. You can find these charts at the simplefoodproject.com as well as herbsmith.com. And I welcome you to download them and to evaluate either the home cooked diet that you're using or the kibble that you're using, or even the freeze dried um, species appropriate food that you're feeding, but look at it from yet one more perspective. And then I would say that when you need pharmaceuticals and when it's about quality of life for your pet, absolutely, thank God that we have them. But hopefully if you're doing all the other things right, so the right herbs, the right supplements, the right food, you can use less pharmaceuticals and lower doses and have less toxic or negative side effects. So I just want to encourage you for the 30 years I've been a veterinarian, that the pet parents that were proactive, that did these things, their dogs responded much, much better to the pharmaceuticals they needed to use. And they lived a longer, healthier, more vibrant life with a really great quality of life. Thank you so much for spending some time